In this example, we'll show you how to use Le Chatelier's principle to determine the best pressure and temperature conditions to achieve a high yield of product. Nitrosyl chloride, NOCl, can be prepared using the reaction 2NO plus Cl2 gives 2NOCl, and the enthalpy change, delta H, is negative 77.2 kilojoules. We want to obtain the highest possible yield of NOCl. Yield simply means how much NOCl we will obtain once equilibrium is reached. We're asked whether we should use high or low pressure and high or low temperature. When using Le Chatelier's principle, it's more convenient to express the enthalpy change delta H as a heat term in the equation. Because delta H is negative, we know the reaction is exothermic. So it means we write the heat term on the right. So we write the equation and then we add plus 77.2 kilojoules on the right side like this with no delta H. We can simplify it even further by replacing the 77.2 kilojoules with the word heat. In this example, we're not concerned about the specific quantities of heat. So now our equation is ready to start applying Le Chatelier's principle. We want to get the highest possible yield of the product NOCl. In order to do this, we want the equilibrium to shift to the right as much as possible. A shift to the right means we reach an equilibrium with a high concentration of product, which is NOCl in this case. A high concentration of NOCl at equilibrium means we would have a high yield of NOCl, which is what we want. First, we look at the effect of pressure. When using Le Chatelier's principle for pressure, we count the number of moles of gas on both sides. The left side has 3 moles of gas, and the right side is 2 moles of gas. According to Le Chatelier's principle, applying a stress of high pressure will cause the equilibrium to counteract this stress by shifting to the side with fewer moles of gas. Since the right side has fewer moles of gas, an increase in pressure will make this particular equilibrium shift to the right. So we can summarize this here. For this reaction, if pressure is increased, the equilibrium will shift to the right. Remember, we wanted the equilibrium to shift to the right in order to increase the yield of NOCl. Because this equilibrium shifts to the right when pressure is increased, we can state that in order to achieve the maximum yield of the product for this reaction, one should use high pressure. So we can note that down here. The next question we need to answer is whether we should use high or low temperature. Remember, in order to obtain a high yield of product, NOCl, we want the equilibrium to shift to the right. According to Le Chatelier's principle, a decrease in temperature will cause an equilibrium to shift toward the side with the heat term. In other words, we are removing heat, so this particular reaction counteracts this stress by shifting toward the right, producing more heat. So using a low temperature will cause this equilibrium to shift to the right, producing a higher yield of the product NOCl, which is what we want. So now we can summarize the effects of pressure and temperature and state that in order to obtain the highest possible yield of NOCl using this reaction, one should use high pressure and low temperature. However, there's one more thing we need to consider. Even for an exothermic reaction that favors products, there's still an activation energy barrier the reactants must overcome before they have successful collisions. If the temperature is too low, a small fraction of the reactant molecules will have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy barrier, and the reaction rate will be very slow. So for an exothermic reaction, a low temperature will cause a shift to the right and produce a high yield of product. But if the temperature is too low, the rate of the reaction will be too slow to be practical. At equilibrium, we will have a high yield of product, but it'll take much too long to actually reach equilibrium. So if this reaction was being carried out on an industrial scale, a compromise temperature is chosen one that is low enough to produce a fairly high yield, 
but still high enough to maintain a reasonable reaction rate. So we can summarize the answer to this question now. In order to obtain the highest possible yield of NOCl, one should use high pressure and low temperature. However, if this is carried out on an industrial scale, the temperature should be high enough to maintain a reasonable reaction rate. Mm -hmm.